Thank you. Thank you for for your very good uh, speech. And uh, my name is uh, Pentti Hakkarainen from uh, ECB. Uh, you took up also non-performing loans and uh, that uh, problem, and uh, also some uh, initiatives uh, made uh, to solve the issue. My question is, uh, when uh, public authorities are now entering that field uh, uh, more strongly, what is uh, the role of, uh, of uh, the banking industry and uh, the banks? Uh, what, uh, what is uh, their responsibility to clean the mess? Thank you. Uh, okay. Well, I would say it is uh, primarily the responsibility of the banking uh, industry, and that's uh, exactly uh, where uh, our uh, proposals are uh, heading. Uh, when we are uh, discussing the, uh, 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 for example, uh, uh, the supervisory action, it's exactly supervisory action to uh, stimulate banks to uh, address the NPL's issue more actively. Uh, when uh, we discuss the framework for secondary market of NPLs, uh, we just note that in uh, uh, several countries, for example, this is quite restrictive. Even if banks were be willing to uh, dispose of NPLs, sell them on the secondary market, often uh, they are facing quite uh, substantial uh, administrative obstacles for uh, doing so. So this is uh, the element which we can uh, address. Uh, when we are discussing national asset management uh, companies, what we are doing, we are now preparing blueprint how to do it within existing state aid and uh, banking union rules. As we know, banking union has been created with the aim to reduce uh, uh, taxpayers' burden for dealing with the financial sector uh, problems, and this uh, uh, point remains uh, valid, and this point uh, remains while we are uh, preparing proposals and action plan how to deal with NPLs. Maybe I can ask one question. It's uh, something which you have been discussing with the Police of the Advisory Security Committee at lunch. It is about uh, the fact that we achieved a very high degree of financial integration until, until 2006. And then we experienced a, a very deep process of financial disintegration. Uh, now things certainly are going better, but my question is seen from Brussels. What has been impeding the fact that, that um, some big banks, for example, would come to countries like Italy, use the passport, enter the country, conquer the market, and uh, to a certain extent, wipe out the non-performing Italian banks. This would have been a fantastic proof that uh, the single market wins <laughs> over the crisis. Uh, well, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, exactly is uh, our aim when we uh, work on initiatives like banking union and also uh, capital markets union. Uh, one of the aims is to remove cross-border obstacles for doing uh, uh, banking. It uh, concerns regulatory obstacles because what we had been also observing with our uh, system with uh, uh, mm, EU passports that often uh, countries are still, uh, uh, so to say, gold plating the requirements and uh, banks and other financial market participants are still not uh, feeling themselves like in a single market, but rather still dealing with different uh, national uh, markets. So it's addressing uh, those uh, regulatory uh, 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 obstacles, which is uh, uh, often impeding from uh, for this cross-border uh, finance. Uh, of course, since the crisis, one of the obvious reasons was also increased risk awareness as banks were removing and sometimes actually kind of urged by their uh, uh, supervisors and regulators to uh, uh, 
to consolidate, to uh, uh, return to their core domestic activities instead of being active uh, in other EU uh, member states. We had also seen this as a response to the crisis, so this is uh, another element uh, which we need to address uh, within the banking union, capital markets union. Uh, currently, we are uh, uh, looking also on how to create enabling uh, framework for uh, fintech industry, uh, where there are also some EU passports in certain activities, like, for example, uh, crowdfunding or peer-to-peer -peer lending would be uh, uh, necessary to allow also uh, fintechs to scale up in Europe instead of starting in Europe, not being able to scale up, and then moving to US or Asia and scaling up there. and competing from there. So there are a number of uh, elements uh, which uh, we need uh, 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 to work with. So it's both uh, regulatory elements, supervisory practices, risk awareness of the banks uh, uh, themselves, and indeed this increased financial sector integration in Europe is one of the aims of both Banking Union and Capital Markets Union. The uh, Commission uh, probably achieved one of the highest success in the financial industry with the UCITS directive. Basically a blueprint that is copied around the world from Latin America to Asia in how to run mutual funds. But they have one constraint, liquidity daily if not two weeks. 99% of UCITS have daily liquidity. Now, because European companies, non-listed, account for 80% of jobs, so basically company not listed, they cannot benefit out of the UCITS directive. Is there any work the Commission is doing to create like a UCITS type platform, but for funds which can invest in non-listed company because they represent 80% of European jobs? Uh, well, I would say uh, currently uh, we are rather uh, concentrating on how to facilitate that uh, companies get uh, uh, listed. Uh, when we are, for example, uh, simplifying prospectus requirements, which has been already uh, uh, been done, uh, when we are creating uh, those uh, uh, SME uh, growth markets and so on and so on, uh, we are uh, creating uh, a framework how more companies can, uh, uh, can be listed and how companies can actually raise more finance from the capital uh, markets. So uh, that's, I would say, currently uh, the main direction of work which we are uh, uh, considering instead of, uh, instead of other way around. Uh, I'd like to ask about the, the, the Commission's proposals regarding the ESRB, uh, its uh, enhanced uh, authority in certain areas. Um, in the proposals, is there any um, uh, recognition that the ESRB should in the future evolve to be a more powerful macro prudential supervisor in the European Union? And, and I, I guess I, I look at the, uh, I, the issue concerning the fact that now it can only issue recommendations and warnings, but it has no real legal power to back up any of its, uh, uh, of, 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 of its work it's been doing. And, and if it does not, do you think there's any type of asymmetry with the European supervisory authorities? You've discussed how you've enhanced their institutional structure a bit more and they will have greater powers and be more independent of national authorities. And, and, and do you feel that the ESRB framework should be more symmetric with the ESAs? Uh, well, uh, we, uh, as I was telling, uh, on our uh, proposals uh, for, uh, 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 for ESRB, uh, we uh, were acknowledging that actually uh, ESRB has been uh, for a good start of this uh, work, so we are rather, we are not overhauling the framework, we are coming with some targeted changes in uh, certain areas in governance, we are extending uh, areas where uh, ESRB can uh, also uh, issue uh, warnings, uh, including to the uh, ECB, uh, to uh, uh, correct also, as I was saying, some uh, asymmetry between national and uh, banking union uh, level. Uh, and uh, we also give more 
visibility uh, for ESRB uh, to ensuring that European Parliament uh, uh, ESAs uh, are uh, more uh, systematically uh, notified. So those are the main uh, uh, changes we are currently introducing, so we are not introducing some legislative uh, uh, powers at this stage. Mr. Vice President, thank you. Thank you very much for having been with us for the second time. It's a great honor. Um, I have now the, the good uh, news and I'm um, pleased to invite all of you to a reception which is taking place in uh, this direction. Um, tomorrow at 8.30 we are starting with a welcoming address. Uh, it will be me who will be welcoming you. I will tell you about the work which we are doing in four areas. You will see that the fact of having soft law powers also enables you to speak and think about many issues. I will speak about commercial real estate, investment funds, uh, CCPs, and other, other issues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to the Vice President of the European Commission. And uh, I would like to invite all of you to the reception. Thank you. Bye.